Hello and welcome. My name is Bruce Fulton. I'm Digital Projects Librarian for the University of Arizona. Today I'm going to give a short talk on search, browse, and social metadata. We'll begin by talking about some terms. First of all, let me talk about metadata. That really is a pretty easy term in the way I'm going to use it, which is just information about books or resources as opposed to the information contained within the book or resource. For example, the subject of a book or the size of a book, or the publisher of a book. When I talk about socially generated metadata, I'm talking about metadata or information about books and resources that comes from users like you uh, through tags, comments, reviews, social networks, social websites, all that Web 2.0 stuff you hear about. So when people tag a book, uh, and we'll look at that in more detail in just a couple of minutes, or they comment on it, or they write a user review, that's what I'm calling socially generated metadata. I'd like to talk a little bit about search. Most of you know what it means when you search for a resource. For example, you might be writing a term paper. And if you're writing a term paper, you probably already have a subject in mind, and you're looking for specific things to put in your term paper, specific facts, notions, ideas. And so your search is going to be focused. Uh, you're going to narrow down on, on a particular topic. It's going to be convergent. It's going to be specific. You're looking for some very specific things. It's goal-oriented. Uh, you want to write a term paper, you need the information for your term paper. It's systematic, or at least hopefully it is. You formulate a topic and then you uh, build a search strategy. Uh, the way you would search for something in a library typically would be a card catalog. You could also ask a reference librarian. Uh, and those are some ways that you would execute a search. In contrast, browse tends to be unfocused. Browse is when you're not quite sure of what you're looking for. Uh, and you don't really know exactly where to start, so you just kind of pick some place and you go for it. It's unfocused. Uh, you don't necessarily know exactly what you're looking for. It's divergent. You might be willing to entertain a number of different kinds of ideas. It's serendipitous, and I'll talk about more of that, about that term in just a minute. It's dynamic. Um, you might look for something, find something, go into it in a little bit of depth, come back to it, um, maybe skip it, uh, uh, move on to something else. Typically, it's undirected. Um, it depends on the speaker to recognize relevance and make associations that serve individual needs for information. In other words, you might see something, and that's going to have to trigger something in your mind that you might be interested in. The way you might browse in a library is just to peruse the stacks, walk back and forth down the stacks. Uh, there may be some special displays that your librarian has put out, new releases and so on. Or you might pick up a book and scan through the contents or the table of contents, the index, and so on. Now, in actuality, people combine these techniques even when they're doing uh, fairly focused searching. Uh, and this is something that Marsha Bates calls berry picking. It's iterative uh, with a variety of information gathering techniques, some resembling search, some resembling browse, uh, working together to serve even highly focused search. So even when you know what you're looking for, sometimes you like to browse because there may be things that you hadn't considered. Something you see might trigger something in your mind. Serendipity, then, is this unsought unintended or unexpected discovery or learning experience that happens by accident and sagacity. In other words, what you find may be accidental or unintended, but you have to have the wisdom to make the association to make that useful to you. Now let's talk a little bit about subject classification. There are a couple of ways we can think about this. One is a formal taxonomy, and a formal taxonomy is just a list of terms. Uh, perhaps the most famous one is the Library of Congress subject headings that librarians use to classify subjects. Uh, developed by and for librarians, very precise, very controlled. You don't make up terms. You don't use terms that aren't in the list. If we take a look at um, uh, the Library of Congress subject headings, for example, now, here I've looked up the term science, as you can see here. It's returned 814 results. This is the Library of Congress uh, Authorities and Vocabularies. And if we look at this, we can see this list of terms. The top level term is science. And then we have all kinds of subclassifications under science. Science indicators, science consultants, uh, material science, um, science museums. We can scan down further and see subclassification, science fiction, European, science fiction, Croatian. You can see this is a pretty comprehensive list of very specific terms. Librarians use these terms to categorize books so that you can find them by subject. 
In contrast, today we have folksonomies and tags. Folksonomies and tags are labels that individuals like you and me put on resources or books or other items that they see that indicate to them what that resource or book is about. These are informal. As I say, they're user generated. They're imprecise, uncontrolled. Uh, one person might type dog. One person might label something uh, canine. One person might call something cat. Another person might label it feline. Uh, so you can see these are uncontrolled. Primarily, people create tags for their own use. You know what you mean. You want to be able to find something later. So you would tag something uh, to make it useful to you. And of course, that makes it of little use to others, except when enough people tag resources, interesting patterns begin to emerge. And what I'm going to do now is give a short demo that shows how you might look up a traditional resource, a resource in a traditional um, uh, um, uh, uh, library. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how social metadata can be used to trigger that browse serendipitous response. I'm going to start with the Library of Congress, which has its catalog online. Library of Congress is one of the larger libraries in the United States. Um, and it has an awful lot of books. Uh, I'm going to look up a particular book, and I'm going to look it up by the subject start. This is going to be Carl Sagan's Demon Haunted World. And I'm going to look it up under Title Begins With and Begin My Search. We find this book, The Demon Haunted World, Science is a Candle in the Dark. This is a book about science, about how science works, uh, about what we know about science and the scientific method. It's written as a, in a popular way, so it's understandable um, for a mass audience. If we look at the mark tags, and these are the tags that librarians use to categorize uh, various metadata about a book, we can look down here at the 650 tags, and this gives us our subject classification. So we can see that librarians have classified this science, um, methodology, science, study, and teaching, literacy, popular work, science, and civilization. So we're getting pretty narrow there. Now, if we wanted to do some research and find other books like this, or wanted to research these subjects more, we can do a subject browse. So I'll go back up here, and I'll do a new search. And this time we'll do science, methodology, and this time I'll do a subject browse. Begin the search, and now you can see all the, um, all the labels here we have for science, methodology, subheadings, and so on. Let's go down to popular works. I believe that's how our book was classified, science, methodology, popular works. And you can see that the Library of Congress has only seven books that are categorized subject um, science methodology popular. Uh, and, and you can get a good idea from looking at these titles that that's pretty on target for what we're looking for. Here's our book here, The Demon Haunted World, Electricity and Magnetism, What Scientists Actually Do. So we can kind of get a sense of what this book is and find other resources by using this subject classification.